you can create anything that you wish in accordance with the laws of the particular universe and the particular planetary experience that you have agreed to be a part of for however many lifetimes. And so this is where true contentment begins because what you are describing is balance. And balance can only be restored when one begins to realize that you do not require a being outside of you to create your reality exactly as you wish. Hello, passionate listeners and watchers. Welcome to Passion Harvest. I am Louisa, your host. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are in the world right now. I'm so excited about our two guests today, Robert Henry and Rene. Robert Henry channels the archangels. Robert is a channeler of the angelic realms and he is assisted by Rene, a hypnotherapist. Robert and Rene's passion is to bring knowledge to humanity and to assist Gaia in other ways to ascend to the fifth dimension. This is their story and this is their passion. Robert and Rennie, welcome to Passion Harvest. I'm so honoured and excited to have you on the show today. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much, Louisa. Uh, um, We're looking forward to this. Me too. My gosh, I can't wait to see <laughs> the angels of from the angelic realm who steps forward yes. just before we start if you don't mind giving the audience just a little bit of background about um a little bit of your background renee and robert how he ch channels the angels and how it evolved absolutely um i'll let robert explain exactly what happens when the archangels come in so i'm going to be quick because we want to give you all the time to um have this conversation with the archangels themselves. But um, yes, I was part of organized religion for 50 years. And to step away from that, it doesn't happen just in one day. Something very significant has to happen. So, um, you know, all this information about Dolores Cannon and so on just came to me. And it was in November of 2018 when I realized, wow, but reincarnation is a reality. So I told Robert Henry, and he was very much also in the church. You know, he was actually the organist in the church. So I said to him, Robert, do you know that reincarnation is a reality? And he said to me, no, mom, sorry, I don't believe it. Um, and you should not believe it as well. So <laughs> thinking you're having a midlife crisis or something. <laughs> like yeah, that. absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I was I was much younger than I am now and much less experienced in terms of life. And so <laughs> just as any young person is at at that young and tender, tender age, you think you know everything or almost everything. And so I told my mother, no, it's not possible. I don't believe you. And indeed, that very same evening that we had that argument, I, in the dream state, so while dreaming, I actually was introduced to very small but very significant parts of some of my past lives. And so the next morning I woke up and I told my mother, I said, I'm so sorry, you are right. And from that point on, it, it just evolved into what it is now. Yeah, it was about in February um, in 2019, the next year, I enrolled in the course of Dolores Cannon, the QHHT. And then I thought, wow, this is fantastic. I'm going to do past life regressions, helping people. And the third session, and of course, Robert was my first subject. He said, yes, let's do this. <laughs> and by the third session, the archangels unexpectedly stepped forward. And may I say, I was so frightened. The energy was crazy. And... Um, I didn't even tell them, well, I'm, I'm afraid what's happening now. Uh, it was Archangel Razahel that stepped forward and he said um, to me, you do not have to be um, afraid of me. And 
then he said to us, listen, you are not going to do um, past life regressions. This is why you two came down. Um, we will be here imparting knowledge to humankind. And um, Archangel Razahel is the one that stepped forward at that stage and says, okay, but his dominion is knowledge. And that is part of our mission. We will also assist Gaia in the ascension process. So that is our mission. It was spelled out to us. And um, I left my career, Robert left his career, and this is what we are doing at the moment. <laughs> It's absolutely yes, and at, wonderful. Sorry, at please. The time, <laughs> at the time, I was, of all things to be doing, I was an accountant. An accountant. I know, oh. I've done my research. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so in, indeed, it was a, a great change to me because I was a very, by my very nature, I was a very factual person and black and white. There was no gray area. And when I came into this mission that I that we had discovered, I discovered there was so much more. And I discovered parts of myself and of the reality around me that I would not have discovered otherwise. And it has been the most singularly wonderful journey that we have embarked upon. And we continue to go upon this journey. Amazing. I, well, I, I can't wait to get started. I just wanted to ask you a question, you, <laughs> Renee, you, Renee. You spoke about the energy. You, you felt the yes. energy of the angels. Um, what, what does that, probably hard to put in words, what, what does it feel like? Yes. Um, Louisa, sometimes it feels as if my whole body is buzzing. Um, it's hot. <laughs> I mean, you feel um, very um, energized, I can say, mm -hmm. and it's just different. You can absolutely feel, I can feel it's not Robert next to me. Um, the, 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 the energy of the archangels are very, very strong. But maybe it will be of very interest uh, to you and your audience if Robert can explain how he feels when he's channeling. Yes. So one of the first things that I notice is that I am in a space of absolute neutrality. So there is no emotion and there is no order or chaos or any such feelings. There is only love and balance. And indeed, when I have left the body consciously, so my consciousness leaves the body, then indeed I see all that occurs and I feel the sensations physically of the body as the energy goes through the body, but I do not have the means to consciously interpret anything at all. So that what that means is that I am completely consciously cut off from them in the sense that Yes, the conscious mind, the calculating mind, the mm -hmm. part of the mind that goes one plus one must equal two is not present at all. Oh, that's the account so, in you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The archangels gave me a certain way of putting Robert into a state, mm -hmm. the hypnotic state, so that his conscious mind will not interfere at all. So it is as if he is in a, a box uh, with glass all around him but he can't hear anything. So um, I, I'm uh, giving him a key word mm -hmm. and all hypnotherapists outside there will know that you can give the subject a key word and he will drop into that specific state again each time. 
Thank you. Great. Well, I'm, I, I would love to get started if you are comfortable right. doing that. And then we yes, can, I can ask, we're about to ask questions to the archangels, whoever steps forward. This is exactly amazing. So whenever yes. you're ready. We are ready. Um, I can just explain what's going to happen now. So um, we're going to mute so that I can give Robert his keyword and then we will unmute and you will see the archangels coming in. They will introduce themselves and then I will tell you, you can get, just go ahead. Okay. Okay, let's click and mute. Those who wish to come forward may do so now. Our salutations to all. For those of you who do not know, we are Razile. Our dominion is that of knowledge and past lives. Thank you very much, Archangel Razahel, for stepping forward. And Louisa, you are free to ask any of your questions. Well, hello, Archangel Raziel. Um, thank you so much for joining us on Passion Harvest today. It's, it's such an honour. And um, oh gosh, I'm stuck for words for the moment. <laughs> Would you mind describing to the Passion Harvest audience, for those that obviously are not in connection with them, what are angels and the archangels? So indeed, the purpose of the angelics through our various dominions over which we preside. So in the case of we who are Razael, it would be knowledge and past lives, but we have various dominions according to the angelical realm. And so it is that we are beings that are specifically created for the realm of the earth experience because it is an experience where souls enter the experience to experience limitation in all its forms. And because this is such a challenging matter. We as angelics are beings that have been created for the earth experience in its entirety to assist through knowledge and other means all souls within the earth experience. I guess I'm going to ask some of the universal questions. Why do we have to suffer in our physical earth experience? Very well. So this is that which we have come to alter. And that is to say that souls do not enter the earth experience to indeed prove themselves to any deity or higher being. It is simply that souls who come into the earth experience have done so because it is the most challenging planetary experience that exists within all the universes and all the galaxies. So in that way, yes, Earth is a proving ground. It is where souls come in various forms to experience various things in various situations. And indeed, they enter the earth experience because they wish to challenge themselves. 
Now, indeed, one may ask, why would one wish to do so as a soul? Because yes, a soul is nothing more than pure energy. It is balanced energy. So why do souls come into a space of limitation where there are so many exceeding challenges? And this is to achieve the universal objective of each and every soul. And that is soul growth. And nowhere within any of the other planetary experience is there more soul growth to be gained than within the Earth experience. And this is because it is, as we have stated, the most challenging planetary experience that exists. Thank you so much. Um, probably maybe a silly question. What is the purpose of soul growth? Is there an end point? Yes. So to Yay. begin. <laughs> so to begin, and this is what we begin with, and that is to state that it must be considered and acknowledged that each and every soul, irrespective of the form that it takes in the various planetary experiences, is and remains equal to the source of all things. And it is the source of all things that indeed gathers and collects not only knowledge, but also experiences. So yes, each and every soul is an extension of the source of all things. And the purpose of source, as we as angelics name it, is to learn everything and experience everything there is to experience. And so when you, as an extension of source, as the soul, in your soul journey have found that yes, you have learned everything in terms of knowledge and experience which you wish to learn so you have a particular soul desire particular things that you wish to learn as a soul then yes you return to source and you become once again part of source itself thank you so much so when we learn and grow through conflicts contrasts, joys and sorrows we're we're adding to the collective consciousness that is uh, correct. And this as, collective consciousness is what is often referred to as the Akashic Records. But these are not books. These are experiences and knowledge contained on the ethereal planes, which is where we dwell. It is not a room in particular. It is simply a space of being where all experiences and knowledge is stored and accumulated. This is a wonderful subject, thank you. Ha having talked about just mentioning the Akashic records, does that mean the past, present and future as we term it or as time, everything has already occurred? That is correct. And time and any manner of difference is merely part of the illusion that is the Earth experience and part of the challenge also. So even the future as we term it, whether it's this life or our many other lives ha has already occurred. We're just not remembering it. That is correct. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> um, oh my gosh, my next question. So, so I just have to ask, because I get this question asked all the time, we choose to return to this physical. It is our choice to return to this physical incarnation. Yes, although there is a matter of being compelled as a soul, and this occurs due to limitation and the greatness of the illusion that is the earth experience. It is that souls at times, and in particular spaces, they may 
indeed act universally unfittingly towards one another. And so what comes into existence is what is often referred to as karmic debt or mm -hmm. karma. And so in this instance and in this instance only, each and every soul when they return and the lifetime is reviewed and there may be karmic debt to be repaid, then yes, the, soul, the souls involved compel one another to return. But it is still the choosing of the soul, yes. So we talk, we refer to karma as an energy doing good or bad deeds to ourselves or another or to the planet. Energy always remains and that has to be, I'm not probably using the right term, repaid or um, in some way alleviated. Yes, balance must be restored. Beautiful way of putting it. Thank you so much. Um, that leads me to my next question. We talked about past, present, future, or time. Does that mean fate and free will are essentially the same thing? As the human consciousness often describes it, we would have to say no, that fate is not entirely the same as free will, because fate is an energy or a concept that has been created under limitation by the human consciousness due to the fact that they have indeed, furthermore, due to limitation, they have very often forgotten that all that they need within themselves and within their reality is within them as a being. So a being outside of each and every soul is by no means required, nor is it universally fitting, although due to free will, it is permitted. And so it does occur within the earth experience because this is the only experience where limitation in all its forms is explored by souls. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, I'm going on tangents here, but you spoke, <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm digressing, but you spoke about um, the earth as a planet. Are there other planets we as energetic beings or souls uh, have experiences on? Yes, there are innumerable other planetary experiences and experiences that are not planetary experiences that souls have for various purposes and to achieve various objectives on soul level. And so now we will make another statement. The human consciousness many times refers to itself as earthlings, but we shall make the statement that there are no indigenous souls of earth. So all souls that are within the earth experience come from other spaces within the universes and the galaxies, because what is earth? Earth is a proving ground. It is a planetary experience where the greatest challenges are endeavored to experience and to overcome. Thank you so much. I'm just thinking about questions that I often get from the audience. Um, how do we, how do we, uh, I'm asking an archangel for this, how do we be happy in our earthly experience? How do we find happiness? Well, this begins with that which we have stated previously, and that is that one must begin to realize that all that one needs as a soul is within oneself. Because if one should give energy to deities outside of oneself, so higher beings, so you consider yourself lower or in 
indeed you genuflect in terms of energies. So you think yourself lesser or you consider yourself lesser than another. Then yes, you are not indeed reaching your fullest potential as a soul. Why? Because you are and remain as a soul equal to source, which means you can create anything that you wish in accordance with the laws of the particular universe and the particular planetary experience that you have agreed to be a part of for however many lifetimes. And so this is where true contentment begins, because what you are describing is balance. And balance can only be restored. And this restoration can only begin when one begins to realize that, yes, you do come into the earth experience with other souls, but you do not require a being outside of you to create your reality exactly as you wish. And so this is where it begins. Thank you so much. It's a very popular uh, topic at the moment, creating your reality or the law of attraction. Uh, can we create the reality that we desire? And how do we do this? Yes. So we shall indeed examine this. So to begin, yes, one can create anything, which means that the universe who presides over the planetary experience and keeps the planetary experience what it is, does not differentiate whether you create something that you deem fitting or unfitting. So indeed, when we say that you as a soul can create anything, we do mean anything. And the universe does not discern whether you would deem the creation that you create to be fitting or unfitting within your reality. And this is perhaps one of the most challenging matters to consider. And that is that everything within your reality, whether you consider it to be fitting or unfitting, so whether you consider it to be a fitting part of your reality or not, you can alter anything because you can create anything. So if you should have created as a soul something that you deem unfitting and that no longer belongs within your, within your reality, then indeed you as a soul must uncreate it, and you can. And so now comes the matter of, in a physical way, how do we achieve creation? So it does not matter what one wishes to create, whether it be something as simple as perhaps a cup of coffee, or perhaps the perfect home, so the most fitting home for you as a soul, you can create anything. And indeed it begins with alignment. So you direct your energy as a soul towards something. So what does that mean three dimensionally? It means you give it your attention. So, you're, so you spend your energy or you give your attention to that which you wish to create. That is why if one gives one's attention to matters that one considers unfitting, then if it proceeds for a number of spaces, then you begin to create something within your reality which you may consider unfitting as a soul. So this is the first step. You begin to give your attention to a particular matter which you wish to create or a change which you wish to make within your reality. 
then you indeed begin to gather a feeling. So you begin to feel what it is like to have a particular creation within your reality. That is why, as an example, souls in human form often say that when they are, particularly when they are traveling, oh, I can feel I'm already there. And this is essential. This is how one begins to create. Because time does not exist when creating. So universally when creating, yes, time does not exist. Indeed, now we come to the third step, which is, and this is the step that within the earth experience in particular is the most challenging. And that is to allow the universe. So the universe is the entity with which one interacts when one creates anything within the earth experience. Now the universe is not a deity. She is not a higher being, but she is unformed energy that is within this reality that is earth and within this planetary experience with which each and every soul interacts constantly when creating and manifesting and doing anything within the earth experience. Examples of other universes are one's own body having physical form. Your body is a universe. So just as your body is a universe to you, to your soul, so too the planet has its own universe as well. And so the third step involves that this is where one leads the universe to rearrange matters so that your creation can become a physicality. But very often, souls wish to, in their limitation, to determine how the universe should present a particular physicality which they have created to them. But the universe knows most fittingly how to do this. And so this is perhaps three-dimensionally the most challenging step in creating anything at all. Then we come to the fourth step, which is now the universe has begun to rearrange matters within the world and within your reality many signs and interactions, the universe informs you that it is now perhaps time to take action. And so this is where you present physical energy to begin to bring your creation into physicality. And so this is a partnership between you and the universe of this planet. And this is how one creates. And then the fifth step is where the physicality presents itself. So whatever you have created then presents a physical form. Now all physicalities do not necessarily have a tangible form, but they do have physicality all the same. Now we have explained universal creation in a very simplistic manner. It is not as linear as we have explained, because indeed there are many ways in which these steps can be arranged, how swiftly they occur, and all such variations. But this is a foundational explanation, and it is an explanation that humanity may use to begin to explore how to create even more fittingly than they already are, both individually and as collectives. 
thank you so much for that clarity. It was, you know, very, very, very clear. I've got two more questions if you're open to me ask, if you have the time or you're open, what's time, but open to me asking. <laughs> Is that okay? Proceed. Um, how many people want to connect with the guardian angel or angels or support from the universe, well, particularly angels? How does one do this? So we return again to the first step which we have named, and that is that one must begin to realize that everything that is necessary for you to complete anything that you have agreed to do within the earth experience begins with you. So you must begin to realize as a soul that you are equal to, not only to source, but to all others. And so, yes, we are here as angelics to assist humanity, but this is the first step. So you must begin to realize that you are equal to not only all other souls, but also to source itself. So in that way, yes, you are the creator. You are the creator of your own reality. Then indeed, yes, you may draw within yourself and you may do this in various ways. Meditation is perhaps the most well-known example of this. So draw within and you connect with your soul, that creative energy that is within you. And then yes, you will find that through meditation and many other, many other means, you may begin to connect with us. And you do this by asking whatever question you have to ask. And so indeed, it is not necessary for souls to remember or even determine our various dominions, we will answer according to our dominions. So simply ask the question. But ask it in a manner as you would ask an equal. Do not genuflect, do not pray, simply ask the question. And then we come to another part of this when one connects and wishes to acquire knowledge on various things. And that is that the way in which the answer is presented is within the dominion of the universe itself and within the dominions of the angelics. So one should not attach or ascribe a particular way in which the answer will present itself because then one is more likely or the possibility is greater that one will overlook the answer as one proceeds through one's lifetime. Thank you very much. And, and just, I mean, I've got lots of questions, but my last question, which I think many people ask, what happens when we transition, when our physical body dies? Very well. So, Yes, while one is within the earth experience, one's soul is attached to the ethereal planes by means of a cord. And why this is, is so that a soul can, particularly during states of rest, and this is most commonly experienced through the state of dreaming, that the soul leaves the body, the physical layer, while attached with a cord, and then retrieves any knowledge from the Akashic records that it requires, and then it becomes a part of the soul. And if one is aware of, and one is aligned with one's soul, then this knowledge begins to seep through to the physical layer. And so one can use it within the lifetime. And indeed, when the lifetime concludes, then the cord is cut. 
And this is what is often described as the seeing of a great light. And the feeling of completeness. So this is what happens. The cord is cut and the physical layer is returned and all other layers of the body are also returned. And so the soul then returns to the ethereal planes and then what begins what is often referred to as the life review. So the soul then reviews the lifetime that it has just experienced and then determines for itself whether it has achieved the particular degree and manner of soul growth that it desired as a soul. And even though there may be no karmic attachments for which it should be compelled to return to the earth experience, it may of its own accord determine that it has not to its desire achieved a particular soul growth and so it returns of its own accord. And this is another concept which we have come to alter. No higher being or higher entity or deity judges souls. There is no judgment. However, each and every soul during the life review determines for itself whether it has achieved the soul growth that it has intended to achieve through the lifetime. Thank you so much, Archangel Raziel. Um, I guess probably on the final note, I'd, I'd like to ask you, do you have a message for Passion Harvest or the Passion Harvest audience that you feel called to share? Yes. The earth experience is most exceedingly challenging. This we acknowledge. However, no soul is sent to the earth experience as A punishment or for suffering. There is no such objective. The source of all things punishes and indeed allows no soul to suffer. This is a concept that must be, when one is ready, this concept should be discarded. And the Earth experience should be seen as the greatest challenge within all the universes and all the galaxies. And you as a soul should allow spaces where one reflects upon this as a soul, to say, you as a soul, you have entered the most challenging experience and that which you are doing and the attempting to achieve and the great limitation, which is the great challenge of this experience. You are indeed achieving great things because you have accepted great challenge. And so this is the aspect within which the Earth experience can and should universally be viewed. And indeed, we remind all souls that all that you need is within you and that the earth experience is not intended for you to enter or proceed through alone. That is why souls come to the earth experience and become part of it in varying degrees of groups of souls, because that is what makes the earth experience so unique. And we further remind all that all that you need is within you our uh, greetings and salutations to all.
Now I want all the consciousness and personality of Robert to once again return to this body and fully integrate now. Robert, I'm going to count from five to one. And on the count of one, you will be wide awake, feeling wonderful. Coming up now, five, four, three, two, one. Wide awake, wide awake, feeling wonderful. Ah. You're back, Robert? Yes, good day, everyone. And both to you, Louisa, and to your audience. <laughs> Gosh, I can't Louisa, wonderful questions that you have asked. Really, thank you very much for that. Oh my gosh, Robert and Renee, Rennie um, and Archangel Raziel and your beautiful daughter who's doing all the IT in the background. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. Now, where can people connect with you? Where's the best place for people to contact you? Louisa, we have a website, askangelics.com. Um, at the end of this month, we will have 100 videos where People from all over the world send in their questions to our website. I ask the questions under hypnosis where the archangels come in. They answer their questions and we put it out in video form. Such wonderful work you're doing. And I just want to thank you so much for being on Passion Harvest. It's been such an honor and a delight. <laughs> thank you very thank much. You to you thank you. Thank you audience. so much. <laughs> Bye. If you liked this episode, please do subscribe for weekly passionate inspirational interviews.